the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands... The smith, a mighty man is he. Yes, the great poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was so inspired by the physical strength of the village blacksmith that he immortalized him by writing this famous poem. Well, we have a giant smith in Naughty Pine. His shop is at the main intersection of two highways just at the north edge of town. Jacques McIntosh is his name. He has arms like the piston rods on a steam locomotive. Every morning you can hear him in his shop singing praises to his Lord. He lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Jacques uses a five-pound steel maul like most of us would use a tack hammer. He's a spiritual giant in the community, too, as well as a physical tower of strength. A lot of truck drivers and townsfolk purposely pass his place of business just to hear his singing. But things weren't always this way with the beloved Scotsman, who carries some of his father's accent in his speech, and who radiates the love of God and the joy of salvation like the heat from the forge in his shop. But let's go back a couple of years and begin the story in Jacques' own home with his wife, Anne. I like to call this one The Wrong Valley. Hello. Hi, Anne. Fred. Oh, hello, Fred. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How about yourself? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. But right now I'm up to my elbows in canning. I can't talk very long, Fred, because I've got a batch of watermelon pickles in the jars, and they're in the oven and due to come out soon. I can't talk long either. How's that big brother-in-law of mine and my nephew? Oh, they're both fine. Ernie's in school, and he goes over to the shop after school to give Jock a hand and and also to learn the trade. Uh, How are Phyllis and the children? Oh, they were fine when I left. Oh, you're not on the road again. Any girl, when the boss says, Freddy boy hit the road, Freddy boy hits the road. Oh, that's a shame. You haven't been back more than three weeks from the last one. Uh, I know. Maybe next year I'll get promoted. Then I can stay at home like I want. Oh, Fred, I must hang up. It's time to open the oven. Oh, right. It's time for me to get to work. Bye. Bye. It was so nice to hear from you. Hello, Bill. Afternoon, Jock. Uh, I wonder where the fire is. I don't know, man. But it's been some time since I've heard the sirens crying out their bitter wail. I can tell you that. Well, what's on your mind? Uh, When can I bring the horses in for new shoes? When can you go out on the trail and take care of the rest of them? (laughs) You know, man, I've got the jump on you. I've already taken to the ordering of the shoes... And next week they should be here. And I can do the whole job in three days. One day here in the shop and two in the trail. How does that strike you, Fancy? It strikes it fine. (laughs) Jock, we just took your wife to the hospital. She's badly hurt. The stove blew up. (laughs) 
<laughs> you, you, you wouldn't be joking with me now, would you? Come on, man, get in. Go on, Jacques, I'll close up. <laughs> All right, but Ernie will be... Jacques, in... stop walking in circles. I'll take care of everything. Now, go on, get in the squad. <laughs> That's where the fire engines were going. <laughs> Oh, hello, Ernie. Uh, how's school, huh? Okay. Say, where's Dad? Out on a job? Um, uh, no, uh, son. He's over at the hospital. Is he hurt? No, but, uh, uh your mother is. She, she is? How? Oh, no, no, take it easy. She had an accident. I'll, uh, take you over in my car. I'll make it quicker on my bike. Hey, hey, Ernie, come here. Uh... Ah, poor kid. Hey, Cal, you look like you lost your last friend. What's wrong? Finish up locking up the shop and get in. I'll take you over to the hospital. What? Did did Ann die? No. Well, spill it, man. What's wrong? Jacques's boy, Ernie's been hit by a car. Jacques, how is she? I don't know, man. The doctor's still with her. Jacques, I, I, I've got to add to your load of grief. I, I, I'm sorry, but, but you must be told. I already know about Ernie. Huh? Well, well, how did you find out? I was in the hall when they brought the laddie in. Oh, Jacques. That was my fault. I, I should have made him ride in the car. The lad is impulsive, man. He told me you asked him to ride in the car. Well, there's nothing I can say. The English language doesn't have words to express my sorrow and sympathy. But I'll pray for all three of you, Jacques. That the Lord will heal your loved ones and give you strength to bear the load. Hello, Doc. Uh, want me to leave? No, no. Stay by all means. Jacques can need all the help he can get. Uh, Jacques, the doctor wants to talk to you. I, I'm listening. Give me the bad news. Jacques, your wife is blind. Her eyes are filled with glass fragments. Is there no hope? Not right now, Jock. Perhaps later. How, how's the lot? His right leg's filled with multiple fractures. It'll take months to heal, and he may never have full use of it. Jock, I'm brokenhearted for you and your family. I'm sorry, I'm only a doctor, not the Lord himself. God, how can you do this to me? I've been a good man. I've been a good Christian. I've honored you all the days of my life, and my family has honored you too. I've accepted your son as my savior. I've lived by your laws. I've given you my money, and I've testified of salvation to men. Is this what I get for my reward? Are you going to strip me like you did, Job? Fairly good, Jacques. Your burns pain you much? Not too badly. How's Ernie? He's in good spirits. But the doctor has no encouraging news. Here, here, I'll get the water for no, you. No, no, dear. I've got to begin to find things for myself. <gasps> uh, uh, you should have let me get the water for you. Don't you realize you can't see? Jacques, how can you say that? Uh, Ah, forgive me, lass. I'm beside myself with despair. For Ernie and me, or, or for yourself? Huh? Explain yourself. Give me your hand, Jacques. But what's come over you, Annie? 
I'm worried about you, dear. I, I worry constantly how you're going to take this. God has turned this back on me like it did to Joe. No, 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 please, yes. please, you mustn't be bitter. Oh, the Lord has a reason for all this. If it's his will that I shall be blind, then then we must abide by his will. How can it be God's will that a wonderful woman like you should lose her sight? And the young laddie of ours, he cannot walk and may never be able to walk very well again. I tell you, and God has forsaken no, us. No, Jack, no. Promise me you'll never say that again. What good will that do? Because I'll be thinking it, even if I'm not speaking it. Horse of yours takes a king size shoe, man. Uh, storm's a big horse, Jack. Uh, thanks to your expert craftsmanship, you got a fine pair of feet. Yeah, uh, yeah, that should fit like a glove. Mm-hmm. I uh, stopped by the hospital last night. So on in the lad had told me. Who oh, now, Storm? Who? Oh. Come on, get your weight off your foot. Ah, that's fine now. Hey, Bill, will you hand me that trimming knife? I've got to shave his hoof just a wee bit. Mm-hmm. Here you are. Thank you, man. Who now, Storm? Oh, whoa, Storm. He's a big fella. <laughs> He's full of energy. Nice. Makes him restless. Why do you get a good workout this afternoon? Ah, that's a fine fit. I'll rasp his hoof smooth to the shoe, and he can run to his heart's content. Jack, you're really a master craftsman. That's a beautiful job. Thank you, man. I was hoping that lad here, mine, would follow in his father's footsteps and learn the trade. But God has fixed that so it can't be done now. Uh, Jack, uh, why do you use the forge? I thought you'd know that, man. To soften the metal so I can mold it and shape it to size. And to temper the metal. How many times have you read your Bible through? Three. And I'm beginning the fourth. Then you know how many times God refers to tempering Christians by the fire of affliction. I wouldn't care if God made me suffer, man. But to blind and burn my wife and cripple my laddie? That I cannot see what God would do. I've been faithful to God, and I've served him all of my life. God did not do this to my father, nor to my grandfather. Why should he do it to me? Answer me. Can you tell me why he should do it to me? Can you tell me that, man? Can you? No, I can't, Chuck. But it could be that God is testing your faith, just like he did Job's. God and Satan had an agreement about Job. I cannot see how they could have one about Jock McIntosh. I cannot see it at all. God has dealt cruelly with me, I tell you. Even though he has done this to me. But I'll I'll go him one better. What do you mean? I will not turn my back upon God. How are you today, laddie? I'm fine, Dad. Except for this leg. Uh, Sometimes it's pretty painful. uh, There now, laddie. I'll ask the doctor if he won't be giving you some more sedative. That'll help. Dad, is it true I'll never be able to walk again? That that is something nobody can say, laddie. It'll take time to find it out. Yeah, I I guess so. This is a cruel thing for God to do to you, laddie. But it's done now. Don't, Don't blame God, Dad. It was my fault. First of all, I should have let Bill drive me here. And secondly, I should have been more careful riding my bike. Well, Campbell, how are you? I'm fine, but my poor old flat feet are killing me. <laughs> well, sit a spell and rest, man. Things are pretty restful here at the firehouse yeah, today. Just for a minute, Murphy, just for a minute. And I'll get back to pounding my beach. The old boys don't sleep. I like babes, they are, Al. Everything's quiet. Hey, that's a box of lime, Murphy. <laughs> that's right. Let's take a look. That box seven. 
Thought just struck me, Murphy. I think I can read your mind, man. That box alarm came from near Jacques Blacksmith. You sure read my mind, all right. I hope it's not true, though. The poor man's had enough grief. Man, is that place burning? Uh, much good stuff and tools ruined. Oh, see, everything will be ruined. I sure hope Jacques has insurance. Hey, where's Bill? Over there with Jock. You stay away. It's no place for us now. You said it, Sonny. Man feels foolish saying I'm sorry in a mess like this. There ain't no words to describe how we feel for Jacques and his family. Best thing to do is say nothing. You're right, old timer. Uh, fire almost out now. They not need us. All right. Now let's go home and get some more sleep. We got a big day coming up. Yeah, so is Jacques. He probably wishes it'll never come. i afraid a lot of your tools and equipment are ruined from the fire, Jacques. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me none. Let's put them all in the boxes I brought and I'll cut them across the street to that old garage. I'm going to carry on my business there temporarily. Mrs. Snyder consented let you work there, huh? Aye. I thought she was an old grouch. But after talking to her, I find she's a fine old lady. <laughs> she said she was going to offer the garage to me. Well, how about that? You made a new friend, huh? I hope I don't have to have a fire every time I make a new friend. <laughs> What's that silly grin on your face, man? I don't see anything funny. You are, John. Me? How so? You're trying so hard to be bitter, and it just doesn't come natural to it you. It will, all. it will. Just give me time. And I came as soon as I could. I'm glad you did, Bill. I had the nurse help me to Ernie's room here because I, I wanted to discuss our problem. Our problem? Yeah, Bill. Mom and I want to talk to you about... about Dad. All right. Go ahead, talk. Do you both good to get out of here what's all bottled up? Jacques is so bitter against the Lord. He blames God for all this. Mm -hmm. How can we change his mind? Accidents happen all the time to people. I don't see how anybody can blame God for them. Well... You have to understand Jacques' feeling on these unfortunate happenings. He told me he wouldn't care if he had to do the physical suffering himself, but he can't reconcile himself to the fact that his wife and son have to be stricken down. I see. I can't get him to talk about it. He closes up like a clam, and, and I felt tears on his face. Well, that's the whole point. He can't stand to see his loved one suffer. How did he take the fire? I really don't know. He hasn't said much about it. Bill, will you try to help him as much as possible? Spiritual help, I mean? Well, yes, yes, Anne, I will, but uh, there's one thing you must understand. Yes? Jacques has to come around to God's point of view on this, and he has to do it himself. I'll try to help him in this, if you'll let me. What's the matter? You keep your blood pressure down, man. Ah, that's easy for you to say. You don't have to work in this makeshift blacksmith shop. Nothing fits. I don't have the room I need, and I'm going to lose business if I can't get the right place to work. Did the insurance company settle yet? Huh? Well, yeah. Why do you ask, man? You ought to be able to get started building your new shop. <laughs> All the builders are tied up. It would take a miracle to get it done in less than two months. Did you, uh... Deposit the check? What check? I don't have any check. The insurance settlement. Oh, though, that check. It'll be here in two days and I'll deposit it. Jacques, I'll make you a proposition. What have you got in your mind? If I get your shop built within a week, will you sit down with me and talk about your bitterness toward the Lord? Bill, you've been a good friend. But now I think you've gone daft. How can you get the new shop built in a week's time? Let me worry about that. You gain? What good will it do? God's turned his back on Jack McIntosh, and that's for sure. Answer my question and stop feeling sorry for yourself. All right. You have my word. That's all I want to know. Now I got work to do. Uh, 
I can't do it, Bill. I've got three architects besides myself, and we're all snowed with work. Look, Mal, remember what you promised the time I carried your son two miles through heavy snow to get him to the hospital for an appendectomy? Remember, you promised me something, and I've never asked you to live up to it until now. I should have said yes right at the start and saved all this discussion, Bill. Might have known I wouldn't win anyhow. I'll have the plans ready in about 24 hours. That is the foundation plans, and the rest will follow. Thanks, Mal. You're a gentleman. Man, I've got four foundations to pour this week, and you asked me to pour one in 24 hours. Who do you think I am? Remember the time your little girl wandered off into the forest, and my rangers and I stayed on the job 40 hours before we found her? 40 hours without a minute's rest. Okay, okay, I'll do it. When the blueprints are in my hand, I'll get my boys, and we'll do the job. Come on, Neves. Don't make me twist your arm. Nah, you don't have to do that, Bill. I owe you too much for that. I'm just trying to plan my work so we can do it. I'll take half of my crew of masons and carpenters. I'll talk to Johnny Olson. I know he'll help, too. You can be sure we'll get the job done like you want. Thanks, Neves. Thanks a lot. New fortune, Bellows, and all this new equipment and tools. How many days? One week. Okay, I'll have it. What? No fight? <laughs> Listen, the words around town as to what you have in mind. We think it's pretty wonderful. I'll get the stuff if I have to rent a truck and haul it myself. I cannot believe my own eyes, man. It's a miracle. No, it isn't, Jack. You have a lot of friends. <laughs> friends who believe in you, love you. And it must be. <laughs> Tony poured the concrete footings two days ago. Mm -hmm. And now the concrete is hard and they start the walls. <laughs> Look at those masons laying brick. Yeah, and the carpenters are ready to work right behind them in a few hours. It's a miracle. <laughs> and you know who gets the credit, don't you? Sure, man, you do. Oh, uh, not me. God. Oh, uh, but you asked these men to help build the new shop in a week. The Lord put the answer in their hearts or gave me leverage to get them to help. And if the Lord didn't want your new shop to go up, it wouldn't. Look at this shop, man. Everything is brand spanking new. I'll say it is. <laughs> You've got more room now than you ever had because it's <laughs> laid out better. I cannot believe it yet. Well, you will. And uh, now you've got a promise to live up to, Jacques. All right. I'll listen. Where's your Bible? That's right over here. Here you are. Thanks. Let's sit here on the bench. All right. You know the trials and tribulations that Job went through, don't you? I. What did Job say after everything he loved and known had been taken? His body covered with sores? He said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Mm -hmm. That's the first sign of Job's faith in God. Now, Job wanted to talk his problem out with God, too. He, he wanted to reason with God face to face. Aye, and that's what I would like to do. <laughs> I want to ask God why I have to suffer all of this when I've been faithful and have honored him. Well, tonight I want you to read God's answer to Job. It's in these chapters. I want you to pray and ask the Lord to take the bitterness out of your heart. The whole answer is faith, Jacques. When Job came to the place in his mind and heart that he was ready to accept all that had happened by pure faith, then God blessed Job because of his faith. You want me to have faith in God that all of his trouble is to test my faith and nothing more? Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean? Mm-hmm. When you can say to the Lord, even though you kill me, I'll trust you, then you'll have the answer that you want. No man can reason with God. That's what God tells Job in the last chapters. Jacques... How can you reason with God? Why not? Can you stop the ocean waters at high tide? Can you make the rain and the wind? Can you feed all the birds of the earth? Do you know where the universe begins and ends? Right. Uh, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. After you finish reading Job, then read the 23rd Psalm. And you'll find out you've been walking in the wrong valley, Jacques. Get out of the valley of bitterness and despair and walk in God's valley. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jock, I was just driving by your house, and Mrs. Morgan stopped me. Said your wife is making supper. Ah. She can see her through the window. Ah, now she'd kill herself. Get me home, quick. Jock, you're home early. What's wrong? Honey girl, have you gone daft? Or do you want to put me in an early grave? Why, Jacques, you're, you're shaking. Danny, girl, you'll kill yourself trying to Wait a cook minute, and... Jacques. Wait a minute. Huh? What's wrong, Cal? How does Annie know you're shaking? She's ten feet from you. How does she know? Annie. Annie, you can see. Annie, you can see. Yes, Jacques, I can see. Huh? A few hours ago, my sight began to come back. It's almost completely returned huh? now. That's the time after Bill left and I got down and I prayed. I ask God to forgive me for crying out against him. I will sing of my Redeemer. Hiya, Dad. Boy, it sure is good to hear you sing and be happy. I've learned to trust in God and to take everything he does by faith, laddie. Who am I to question God? And watch your crutches on the wet floor. Now, what did the doctor have to say about your leg? He's beginning to think it might mend pretty good. Maybe good as new. Ah. He says I'm strong and young and healthy. Ah, and that's your laddie. And what's more, your father's learned to walk in God's valley now. What do you mean, Dad? Huh. Someday I'll explain it to you, laddie. Someday soon. I'll tell you how to keep walking in God's valley. Hey, why are we stopping here, Uncle Jim? Listen. That blacksmith sure is a big man. A much bigger man than you know, Dennis. Every chance I get, I come by this way. He gives me a real lift. There's a real man of God. How do you like delivering mail in the rain, Mr. Phelps? Oh, fine, Officer Campbell. Just fine. Yeah, you passed the blacksmith shop already. Uh, yes, that's right. There's a really wonderful man. He helps me every day with his singing. Listen to him. So it is right now as you come into the north end of town where the two highways meet. Early in the morning and far into the night you can see the glow of the forge and hear the methodical pounding of the five-pound steel hammer. And above this sound of hard work you can hear Jacques' booming voice singing praises to his Lord. Hundreds of people stop in the course of a year to listen to him. They lean on this tower of strength, not his physical strength, but his spiritual strength his deep and pure faith in God. Never again will Jacques leave God's Valley. Well, see you next week for more adventure with...